This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. All right, the very last bit. You know how to work out cost of equity, you know how to work out cost of debt, you know how to get a weighted average. But the final bit, since the most likely reason for doing all of this is to get a discount rate for a project, that you'll be doing an investment appraisal question, that you'll be setting up your cash flows, but you'll have information about equity, debt and whatever to get the actual discount rate. The final bit um, is making sure you know what discount rate we use for a project. And so my last sheet, and then, as I say, apart from one or two tiny bits later, which are relatively unimportant, these sheets between them should cover just about anything you get asked to do with cost of capital. All right? Uh, and so let's run through, and then I'll just summarise at the end what to remember. I've got three little examples. I've kept them all as short as I possibly can. But example one, the first thing to remember always is that the required return you need the discount rate, it depends on the riskiness of the project. I can't stress that enough. The current risk of the company is irrelevant. Whether currently the company is very risky or very unrisky, what matters is how risky the project is. The more risky the project, the more return we'll need, therefore the higher the discount rate. All right? And so, the first example is easiest of all, and I didn't say anything. Uh, if you know the beta of the project, the risk of the project, it's the risk of the project fixes the return you'd want. And so, can you do example one, please? We know the risk, the beta of the project, therefore what return do we need? There's nothing new there. Is that one correct, please? So there's not much to learn here, but that's the first bit. It's so likely to happen. He'll give you all sorts of information about the company currently. Maybe the beta of the company at the moment is 2.4 or something. But it's completely irrelevant. All that matters is the risk of the project. If the project has a beta of 1.2, that fixes the return we require. It is 15.8. Now, there's only the three here. Is everybody clear about that one? All right. Uh, number two. He's unlikely to make it that easy because the problem, of course... is that how do we find out the beta of a project? And as I've written in number two, and is he so likely to do, if we don't know the beta of a project, we use the beta of a similar company. So again, the current risk of our company is irrelevant. It's the risk of the project. Find uh, a similar company to the project and use its beta. Look at the example. The project is a construction project. We found a similar company, a construction company, and it's got a beta. I haven't told you. <laughs> Shit. Can you add in, please, 
the share beta of a similar company. Uh, let's say is 2.3. So we found a similar company and the beta is 2.3. However, do be careful, and I would make yourself a note if you're going to keep this sheet. In the exam, the betas, any betas you're given, are always betas of shares unless obviously you're told different and so although in this one I actually put a share beta is 2 point I haven't put the 2.3 but you've put it in uh, in the exam if all he said was the beta of a similar company is 2.3 it's automatically a share beta alright the problem though if you remember is the betas measuring the risk of the share. If the similar company is a geared company, then the gearing will have made the share more risky. It will have made the beta higher. What we need to know is the beta of the actual business. We need to take out the gearing effect. You're all with me? And again, it is almost certain you'll need this. But here the similar company is geared in the ratio 40%. Well, we need to calculate the beta of the business. We need to take out the gearing. What would the beta be if there was no gearing at all? That would be a measure of the pure risk of the business. And so here you've got the last formula for the moment. If you look to your formula sheet, you've got the asset beta formula. Uh, if you remember, well, he calls it the asset beta formula. Beta A is VE over VE plus VD1 minus T. Beta E plus VD1 minus T over VE plus VD1 minus T. Beta D. We had it before, I know it's a while ago. But beta A, or the asset beta, is the beta with no gearing, which is what we're after. If there was no gearing, it'd be less risky. That's the beta of the actual business. Beta E. Uh, is the share beta or the equity beta? And beta D is the debt beta. But I told you before and let me repeat. Uh, in the exam, unless he says different... You assume always that the debt beta, that debt rather is risk free, and therefore the debt beta is zero. It's always been the case. Check, obviously, if he did say the debt beta was point 0.1 or something, you'd deal with it. But always you've assumed it's zero. And you've only got the first bit of the formula. V and VD, as always, are the market values. Here, we want to ungear the similar company. And so, uh, the similar company is geared. The ratio, equity debt. Uh, I've said the ratio, debt to equity, is 40%. So, if equity is 100, debt's 40 And so let's use the formula to ungear the beta. And so beta asset, the one we want. Uh, VE, the market value of equity, 100 over VE plus. VD, the market value of debt, 40 times 1 minus the tax rate. The tax rate is 25%, so it's 0.75 times beta E. Did I say 2.3? 
the beach of Isha. Thank you. And so the asset beta, the beta without gearing. Check me as always, I think 1.77. Right, one more, but please don't lose track of where we are. It's the beta of the project fixes the discount rate. If you know the beta of the project, stick it in the formula and there's the discount rate as in example one. To get to the beta of the project, you'll almost certainly be told a similar company. You'll use its beta, but if the similar company is geared, you'll use this formula to take out the gearing. So everybody clear where we are before the, the last possibility? All right, finally, example three, and then I think we've got virtually everything. Um, what we've said so far is fine if we're using shareholders money. In examples one and two, if we're using shareholders money to finance the project, all we need is project beta, and that fixes the return we'll need. Less likely but possible, if debt is used to part finance the project, then we work out a little weighted average for the project. This is the messiest bit, but if you, if you sorted this out, you've got the lot. Look at example three. The beta of the project is 1.2. Remember, that 1.2 either you'd be given or more likely you'll have used a similar company like we just did and you'll have ungeared their beta. All right? But we've got the beta of the project. Project beta. 1.2. So that's measuring how risky the project is. However, the project is being financed 80% equity and 20% debt. And so, part of the money from the project is coming uh, from debt, which will be very cheap, after tax cost of debt will work out in a minute. Part of the money, though, will be coming from shareholders. But, because the project is geared, the beta of a share in the project would be higher. We're going to have to use that formula again. And so what we need to do, I've written the steps uh, above, but let's get a beta for a share in the project. We've got the formula, beta asset equals VE over VE plus VD1 minus T, beta E. The rest of the formula, remember, disappears. Beta debt, we assume, is zero. Well, we know the project beta is 1.2. But a share in the project would be more risky because there's gearing in the project. To use the formula, we need the project gearing. And the project gearing is what? It's financed 80% equity and 20% debt. I want you to finish it. What I want you to do, please, I'll write down the steps. Can you work out, first of all, a beta equity for the project? You'll have to use the formula backwards. Uh, once you've done that, can you work out a cost of equity for the project? And a cost of debt. And then, can you do a weighted average cost of capital for the project?
I think that's right. Check you've got it. It's the last bit, as I said. Ah, uh, your first step always is get a beta for the project. Here it was given you at 1.2. Much more likely, you will have to find it yourself using a similar company, like example two. Are you with me? So use the similar company. Uh, ungear it using the similar company's gearing and get a beta for the project. When you've got a beta for the project of uh, 1.2, if the project is financed, uh, part equity, part debt as it is here, to be able to get a cost of equity for the project, you need the, be the share beta for the project, the equity beta. Use the formula backwards using the project's gearing. You've all checked the arithmetic, I think. But be clear where the figures have come from. Uh, you're getting a beta of a share in the project. You're using the gearing of the project to do it. Okay? Once you've got that, it gives you the cost of equity. That's easy. But that beta, if my arithmetic's right, I'm not worried about bits of rounding here, but I think that's right, isn't it? That's a bit of cost of equity. Uh, cost of debt in the project, be careful. Here I said it was a loan, so a straight loan. Clearly they're paying 6%, but you assume they get tax relief, so it's 4.5%. Had it been something like debentures, then, depending on the information, maybe you'd have to work out internal rate of return like earlier. Uh, here, though, no problem. The cost of debt, four and a half. And once you've got them, then you do a weighted average cost of capital for the project using the project's costs and the project's gearing. And again, I think the arithmetic's right. And on its own arithmetic's easy, 12.88. That would be a discount rate. Uh, but finally, uh, again, it was a long time ago I said it, but he'll never actually expect you to discount at funny rates. He'd expect to see your workings properly, obviously. But if it was then a case of actually discounting cash flows, you would use the nearest percent. Um, you can check your discounting later, obviously but you'd use the tables at the 13%. Okay? All right, well, that is just, a, just about everything. Anything else is trivial. Know what I've written at the bottom. Uh, if he tells you how the project's financed, then it's example three, finished, and I'm sorry. If he doesn't tell you how it's financed then assume the same gearing as currently in the company. And that's happened quite often. He didn't tell you how the money came for the project, in which case you assume it's the same gearing as at present. So if the company's currently geared 20%, 80% or something, use that gearing ratio. Uh, if he tells you it's financed all from equity, then we've no problem. Uh, that was uh, example one. All right.